It's been battering down with rain all morning. Finally, it's stopped and now we can get going. It's one of the biggest mistakes we see on lakes, especially day ticket waters, where the anglers turn up, they get the gear, they throw the rods out and they think that's it, they'll catch a fish from it. It's really important that you know what's going on at the bottom of the lake. This is the marker setter, so it's pretty simple. It's all done with a braid main line. With braid, there's no stretch in the line at all. So whatever I'm feeling, when I'm pulling the lead back across the bottom, it's giving me direct contact with that lead system, let me know exactly what I'm on. So if it's gravel, you'll get a tap-in sensation. If it's silt, you'll get like a really slow slug pulling. You'll be pulling it through like really stiff. Uh, then there's the weed beds. When you throw it in the weed bed, it'll clog up. It'll be very hard to pull the rod through. We've got a lead system boom here, which keeps it off the bottom away from like the bottom debris like the silkweed and then you've got a very buoyant float this is the key to have the most buoyant float you can get your hands on uh, i prefer this one it seems to do the job it'll pull them up through the weed very quickly we've got roughly about 80 yards to the far bank so i'm going to try and get it as close as i can there so i'm looking for like a gravel bar maybe a silk gully so i want to get tight to a weed bed if i can again that's where carp spend most of their time so that's landed roughly about two foot from the other bank which then gives me the complete width of the swim to bring it all back in to find out exactly what's out there. A lot of people hold the rod wrong, they'll put their hands on the reel like that and when they're actually pulling it, it cancels out some of the movement in the lead on the bottom. By holding the rod with one hand, one hand here, one hand here, and then pulling across like that, you'll get much more sensitivity down the blank. So as I pull the lead back now, straight away I'm on gravel there. Let's just give it another foot or so on that gravel, tap, tap, tap. That's great. I know now I'm about a foot away from that wee bed, which is perfect. We know the gravel bar runs right the way down the lake, so we know that's going to be a patrol loop for the carp, which is the perfect way to intercept them with a few baits, a few spod mixes. Let's wind the float down to the lead, and now we're going to peel off the line a foot at a time to find the depth of fishing on. 11, 12. Just about to see the float now. It's come up at 12 foot. Looking at that now, we know there's about 12 foot of water, including the, the actual float and the stem, you're looking at 13 foot. It's unlucky for some, but not for us. You can imagine this is the wee bed that we found. When we first cast out, we plumbed straight into it. So this leak, this is what's happened. Cast out, it's gone straight into the wee bed, and I felt that on the actual rod tip. Where I'm standing now is the gravel patch that we found. When we pulled out, we felt that tap, tap, tap. This is exactly what happened. As we pulled the rod out, it's come straight onto the gravel. I've then given myself another foot of leeway, now, if you can imagine that as a carp, it will patrol all the weed beds. It will find this, it will hug the weed bed as it's going up and down the lake. By giving ourselves a foot, what we want to do now is go off, give ourselves like a bedded area of bait. So we want to bait up probably four foot this side, four foot that side, get the trap set and hopefully bag ourselves one. Everyone's got their own version of the spod mix. Some people just throw whatever they want in there and that'll do. For me, it needs to be a little bit different. Uh, the actual guys at Bait Tech developed some of the best and fresher products available and this is why I use them. First off, we always start with the hemp mix. The difference with this hemp is the actual size of the grains. It's absolutely massive. You can tell it's cooked to perfection. Every single one is split. For me, it's the biggest on the market. I'm yet to find a bigger grain. Bait Tech only use a grade A first class hemp. We're only putting the spod mix out just to start, so we want to tease it in gently. I don't want to go and put 10 kilos straight in. Half the pack to start with. Now the next one after is this stuff. This is the party mix, which really is special. There's 10 different food types in here, which for me gets the carp grubbing around, doesn't keep them preoccupied on one bit. There's 10 to choose from. So you've got mixes of pulses and seeds in there, and they're all fused in aniseed, which is a fantastic carp attractor. We're going to use half of it again. It smells absolutely fantastic. There's loads there to keep them snapping around forever. What carp could resist that? It's absolutely bang on again. So in that goes. So now you've got the absolute perfect seed mix. All the ingredients are actually cooked in these bags. So it locks in the freshness, the goodness, all those attractors. So when you get to your tackle shop, they are the freshest you'll get your hands on. Give that a good swirl again. A little bit of sweet corn. I'm actually using a Scopex broilie. So I'm actually marrying it up with the Scopex sweet corn. Don't want many, I just want a handful. It's just to give that bit of visual yellow in the mix. There we go, in that goes. They also do maize. Now again, I don't want a lot of maize. It's literally just a handful. They are very big seeds. It gives me an extra hook bait material. In goes the maize. Give that a good steer around. And that's it for me. That's your seeds done. Next up is the pellet. Now, what we seem to do from Bait Tech, we've got these fantastic fire track carp pellets mix. There's whole different sorts of sizes in the range, different colors, which gives you a load of different breakdown times, which is perfect. But the problem is what people do, they put it straight into the actual mix now. And because there's so much water in there, the pellet just turns to mush straight away. So a few hours ago, what we've done, we took some of the Bait Tech Carp mix pellet and we fused it in the Excite liquid. What this does, it gives it a good coating and prolongs the life of the pellet. There is three versions in the range. 
That's the original, the straight fish oil one, a chilli version. There's also a tuna. If I can show you the pellet now, look at that. It's a lot darker. It smells absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, you've got smaller pellets, big pellets, so they will have different breakdown times. So that will go in and at least then the pellet will be in the swim for a few hours before it breaks down into mush, rather than casting it straight out as mush. In go the rest of the pellets. Got the pellets, the seeds, the sweet corn, the maize. For me, that's ready to go. That's a spod mix, but if you spot that out, it'll just fall out the back of the spod during flight. So what we tend to do now, I use a bung mix, which is gonna plug the back of the spod, but I also wanna make it into a stick mix as well, which is why we're making it separate. First ingredients up, the special G. Been around for a few years now, and it's been doing fantastic on the match scene. I run a very busy tackle shop, and speaking to the match lads, it's been ripping the match scene apart. If you think about it, the match guys have got just five hours to catch as many fish as they can, so they want that quick, quick bite, the quick feed in time, the response needs to be bang straight away. And this is the stuff that's gonna do it. It's the highest grade A fish meals we can get our hands on. It's fantastic. It also contains a product called GPS 90, which is a super soluble. What it does, it creates that fast feed in time. So these are my two. What I tend to do, the gold and the green are fused together in the Excite liquid. Start off with the green first, pour a bit of that in. Use about a third of a bag, and with the gold as well. In that goes. Give that a good mix up to the two is bang on a 50-50 combo. Look at that. So that's a very fine mix now. Because it's a ground bait, it's like a dust almost. So we need to pack it out a little bit more. So next up, the salmon fry crumb. A fantastic fish attractor. It's full of amino acids, very high quality fish oils. This is the one that's going to get them zooming in straight on the patch. So we just want a quarter of that. Again, give it a good mix up. So there's an even spread throughout the whole mix. There you go. You can see the redness in it now, the change. That's added with the salmon fry crumb. The coarseness is there now, it's not as dusty. It's starting to pack out and look like a stick mix, which is perfect for the plugging of the back of the spod and for those stick mixes. Next up in the mix, the special green feed pellets. There's different sizes in the range. I prefer the two and three mils because it's going into a stick mix. We wanted to keep them small. Now, there's a unique recipe to this. It's only available to bait tech. These are that special. Fantastic pulling power to bring those carp into your swim. There's just one little thing left now. And that's the excite oil again. This will make it PVA friendly. It'll pack up the back of the spod and also pack down the stick mixes we're going to be doing with it. This is the bit where it, go, it will go clumpy, so you need to get a good mix on it. Put the lid on. Just give it a good shake. Get that oil coated in every part of the actual mix. And there she is. Perfect for bunging the back of the spod. Perfect for stick mixes. It's ready to go. This is braid and it cuts like a knife especially through flesh. It's happened to me a few times. This is at the finger store. This is made out of a tough leather. It means you can really get some beef into the rod, and really whack it out there if you need to. The spot itself, it's got a buoyant end. Once you've filled your spot up, as soon as it hits the water, it'll then tip. It's like so. All the bait will fall out onto the patch, which is the marker rod out there. We get about half a dozen spots on the patch to get it going. So we'll start with the first mix that we did, which is all the, the pellets, the hemp, the maize, all those seeds. I'm going to fill that up to about there. I'm just going to plug the rest of the spod with about half an inch with a stick mix. Bang it out, push it down, and there we go. That's the back of the spod. That now keeps all those bits and pieces packed down the bottom, and it'll fly true through the air. OK, when it's hit the clip, guys, it's very important now, just give the spod a few taps on the rod. You'll see the spot in the water now, just keeping it taps. What you're doing then, you're just making sure all the particles are bits and pieces are rattling out the spot and they're falling on the mix. Put the other two bang on the marker, then the other two to the left of it. And what I've got then is probably a four to five foot line on that gravel bar. We'll stick our hook bait right smack in the middle of it. I'm just going to finish up now with a few boilies, literally about half a kilo with a trusted old throwing stick. We're going to scatter them either side of the marker float, probably three foot that side, three foot that side, to give us a six foot area to work with. Four or five boilies at a time, and these are going to go 80 yards. I want all the bait the other side of the marker float. I don't want any bait landing this side of it. So I'll come into contact with the actual fishing lines, and then so will the carp. If you can imagine the floats on the top of the water, I want to reel it down so it hits the actual lead on the bottom and that will give me my true distance from this bank to our baited patch. Just reel the rod down until it hits that lead. Very slowly, bang, there it is. So now the float has come down from the top layer, come down through the columns and it's hit the lead. Now this is the most important part. We're trying to get the right angle on the rod as how you would actually finish a cast. So 
forget this is my actual marker rod. This is how I would be finishing my business rod. So the actual rod with the rig on it, this is how I want to finish the cast. So just get into a comfortable position which is right for you. It doesn't have to be the same angle as I'm at, it's whatever's right for you. If I'm happy with that, I find the clip on the reel, I'm taking the actual line and I'm putting it in the clip. That now it is marked up exactly where that marker float was. And that's it, it's ready to come in now. That's it, job done. We'll get this measured out now. Two poles, and they're both measured out a rod length apart. We're going to put the lead end this side, and we're going to walk the lines out via them until it hits the clip. So opening the spool, that gives me one rod length. Two, three. So that's 17 rod lengths and it's hit the clip. So what we need to do now is grab one of the fishing rods, do the same there. We're going for two sorts of hook baits, one either side of where the marker was. We've got one on a maize stack and the other on boily. The first one out is going to be the maize stack rig. Okay, feeling it down on a tight line, 45 degree angle. Bang, she's hit bottom. We're in exactly the same spot. We'll take the line out of the clip. We'll get the other rod out there. On the, the baited air we messed about with that rattled off to early hours of the morning. Good fight, lovely looking fish. 20 pound old warrior, hopefully there'll be a few more chunks bigger than this one. Awesome.